Um, sh shifting gears to AI, uh, Peter was here earlier and he was talking about how so far the only company to really make money off AI is NVIDIA with the chips. Um, do you have a sense yet of where you think the big applications will be from AI? Is it going to be an enabling self-driving? Is it going to be enabling robots? Is it transforming industries? I mean, it's still, I think, early in terms of where the big business impact is going to be. Do you have a sense yet? I, I mean, I think, I think the, 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 the spending on AI probably runs ahead of, I mean, it does run ahead of the revenue right now. That's, there's no question about that. Um, but the rate of improvement of AI is faster than any technology I've ever seen by far. And, and, and it, it's, I mean, like, the, the, for example, a Turing test used to be a thing. Now, you, you know, your basic uh, open source random LLM you're writing on a friggin' Raspberry Pi probably could, uh, you know, beat the Turing test. Um, so there's, I, I, I think actually, like, like the, the, the good future of AI is one of immense prosperity where there is an age of abundance, no shortage of goods and services. Everyone can have whatever they want unless, except for things we artificially define to be scarce, like some special artwork. Um, but, but anything that is a manufactured good or provided service uh, will, I think, with the advent of AI plus robotics, that the cost of goods and services will be, will trend to zero. Like, or, I'm not saying it'll be actually zero, but it'll be, it, every, everyone will be able to have anything they want. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's the good future, of course. And I, you know, in my view, that's probably eighty percent likely. So look on the bright side. <laughs> Only twenty percent. Twenty percent probably of annihilation. It's nothing. Um, is the, is the twenty percent like? What does that look like? <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, frankly, I do have to go engage in some degree of, of deliberate suspension of disbelief with respect to AI <laughs> in order to sleep well, um, and even then, um, because I. I I, I think the actual issue, the, mo the most likely issue is like, well, how do we find meaning in a world where AI can do everything we can do, but better? That, that, is, that is perhaps the bigger challenge. Um, although, you know, at this point, I know more and more people who are retired and they seem to enjoy that life. So, uh, but I think that, that may be, may, maybe there'll be some crisis of meaning, like it, because the computer can do everything you can do, but better. So may, maybe that'll be, a challenge, uh, but but really, uh, you know, you, you need you need the sort of end effectors. You need the the ro autonomous cars, and you need the sort of humanoid robots or ro you know, general purpose robots. Uh, but the, the, once you have general purpose humanoid robots um, and autonomous vehicles, uh, you really you 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 can build anything. Um, and, and, and this, this, I think that there's no actual limit to the size of the economy. I mean, there's obviously, you, you know, the mass of Earth, you know, like that would be one limit. Um, but, the, you know, the, the economy is, is really just the average productivity per person times number of people. That's the economy. And if you've, if you've got humanoid robots that can do, you know, where there's no real limit on the number of humanoid robots, um, and and they they can operate very intelligently. Then then there's no actual limit to the economy. In it, in, there's no meaningful limit to the economy. You guys just turned on Colossus, which yeah. is like the largest private compute cluster, I guess, of GPUs anywhere. Is that, uh, thing, yeah, is that right? It's, it's the it's the most powerful supercomputer of any kind. Um, which sort of speaks to what David said and kind of what Peter said, which is a lot of the kind of economic value so far of AI has entirely gone to NVIDIA. But there are people with alternatives, and you're actually one with an alternative. Now, you have a very specific case because Dojo is really about images and large images, huge video. So, um, yeah, but, I mean, the, 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 the Tesla problem is different from the, um, you know, the sort of LLM problem. Uh, the, the nature of the intelligence actually is actually, and, and, the, and the, what, what matters in the AI is, is different um, 
to, to the point you just made, which is that in, the, in Tesla's case, the context uh, length is very long. So we've got gigabytes of context. Gigabyte context windows, yeah. Yeah, we've got, you know, sort of, uh, Why are we just bringing it up? Kind of billions of tokens of context, right. not, not any amount of context because you've got um, seven seven cameras and if, if you've got several, you know, let's say you've got a, a minute of several high, de high def cameras, then that's gigabytes. So you, you need to compress, and so the Tesla problem is you've got to compress a, a gigantic context um, into the, the pixels that are that actually matter um, and, you know, and, and, and condense that over a time, and so you've got to, in, in both uh, the time dimension and the space dimension, you've got to compress the pixels uh, in, in space and the pixels over in time, um, and, 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 then, and then have that inference done on a tiny computer, relatively speaking, a small, like, you know, a few hundred watts. Uh, it's a Tesla designed AI inference computer, uh, which is by the way, still the best, there, there isn't a better thing we could buy from suppliers. So the Tesla designed, uh, AI and first computer that's in the cars is better than anything we, we could buy from any supplier. Just by the way, that's kind of a. Well, by the way, you know, in, the, the, the Tesla AI, the AI chip team is extremely good. Well, you guys, in the design, there was a technical paper and there was a deck that somebody on your team from Tesla published, and it was stunning to me. You designed your own transport control like layer over Ethernet. You're like, ah, Ethernet's not good enough for us. Yeah. So you had this TT. COE or something, and you're like, oh, we're just going to reinvent Ethernet and like string these chips. It's pretty incredible stuff that's happening over there. Yeah. Um, no, the team, the, the Tesla chip design team is extremely, extremely good. Um, so. Um, but is there a world where, for example, other people over time that need, you know, some sort of like video use case or image yeah, use yeah. case so, could so, theoretically, you know, you'd say, oh, yeah. why not? You know, I have some extra cycles over here. so. Which should kind of make you a competitor of NVIDIA. It's not intentionally per se, but um, yeah. I mean, the, the you know, there's this training and inference, and we we, we do have the you know two, those two projects at Tesla. We've got Dojo, which is the the training computer, uh, and then um, you know our inference chip, which is in every every car inference computer. Um, so. And, and uh, Dojo, we've only had Dojo 1. Dojo 2 is, um, you know, should be, we should have Dojo 2 in volume towards the end of next year. Um, and and that, that, that will be, we, we think, sort of co comparable to uh, the, sort of a B200 type, type system, a training system. Um, and, um, you know, so there's, I guess there's some potential for, for that to be used as a service. Um, and, but, but, but like, you know, do, do, Dojo is, is, is just kind of like, I mean, we're, we're, we're I guess, I, I guess I have like some improved confidence in Dojo, um, but I think we, we won't really know how good Dojo is until probably version three. Like it usually takes three major iterations on a technology for it to be, to be excellent. Um, and we'll only have the second major iteration next year. Um, the third iteration, I don't know, maybe late, you know, 26 or something like that. How's the, uh, how's the Optimus um, project going? I remember we talked last, um, and you said this publicly, that it's in doing some light testing inside the factory. Um, yeah. So it's actually being useful. What's the build of materials and when, you know, for something like that at scale, so when you start making it like you're making the Model 3 now and there's a million of them coming off the factory line, what would, the, would they cost, 20, 30, 40,000 dollars, you think? Yeah, I mean, what I mean, I've discovered that really that, you know, anything made in sufficient volume will asymptotically approach the cost of its of its uh, materials. So now there's the, there's I should say the, there's it's, so some things are constrained by the cost of intellectual property and like paying for patents and stuff. So a lot of you know what what's in a, a chip is like paying paying royalties um, and depreciation of the chip fab. So, but the actual marginal cost of the chips is very low. Um, so, so, so Optimus, it obviously is a humanoid robot. It, it is, it weighs much less and is much smaller than a car. Um, so the, you could expect that in high volume, uh, and, and I'd say that you also probably need three, three production versions of Optimus. So you need to refine the design th three, at least three major times and, and then you need to scale production to 
sort of the million unit plus per year level. Mm. And I think at that point, the cost, the, the, the you know, the, the, the labor and materials on Optimus is probably not much more than $10,000. Yeah, and that's a decade-long journey it's, maybe? It, basically, think of it like the, the Optimus will cost less than um, a, a small car. Right. So it, at, at scale volume with the three major iterations of technology, and, and so if a small car, you know, costs $25,000, you know, it's, it's, it's probably like a, I don't know, $20,000 for, for an Optimus for a humanoid robot that can be your, your body like a combination of R2-D2 and C-3PO, but better. Yeah, um, I mean... You know, that's, that's, and I, honestly, I think people are gonna get really attached to their humanoid robot because, I mean, like you look at sort of, you watch Star Wars and it's like R2-D2 and C-3PO, I love those guys. Yeah. Um, you know, they're awesome. Um, and the, their personality and, and I mean, and all, R, or, all R2 could do is just beep at you. Right. <laughs> and, and I yeah. can't speak English. Um, uh, and you need C-3PO to translate the beeps.